The Gullah culture is very well known in the Low Country. It's an African American community with a unique language and history. For centuries, the group held on to their distinct way of life, but that has been threatened by increasing development. Now, efforts are underway to ensure that future generations and the general public know about the Gullah's past, present, and future. Drive through St. Helena, South Carolina, and you'll come across the Barefoot Farm stand on Sea Island Parkway. It's where Dorothy Seabrook and her daughter Betty Strickland shared with us a plate full of family stories. I want to get in the kitchen. I love to cook. Soul food. <laughs> Food is one of the oldest Gullah traditions. As a young girl, Strickland taught herself to cook while Seabrook worked the farm. So from then on, that was her job. Cook before I get there. <laughs> you have strawberries in about 20 days. Agriculture serves as a way of life. After the Civil War, Africans purchased land to grow rice, vegetables, and other crops. For years, this Gullah community was isolated, which allowed them to better protect their roots. But as time passed, development transformed life on the sea islands. A while back, I said to my mom, gee, after a while, we, we might need a map to find the way home. And surely, day by day, month by month, we can see the changes. One concern is land ownership. That's an important asset to the Gullah people. Rosalind Brown works with members of the Penn Center to help preserve this rich African history. It's one Brown says wasn't always celebrated. We didn't want to identify ourselves as descendants of slaves or as Gullahs. But times have changed and now there's a push to protect and preserve this culture. Of all the national heritage areas that exist in the United States today, the Gullah Geechee Corridor is the only one that deals with a living, breathing culture. The corridor reaches from Wilmington, North Carolina to St. Augustine, Florida. It helps show the arrival and disbursement of Africans during the slave trade. Organizers say Gullah Geechee people played a significant role in the history of these four states. They became the engine that actually developed these coastal states and also became the engine for the economic growth of what we see today here in Charleston three centuries later. For years, Allen's worked with communities along the corridor in an effort to identify and protect sites connected with the Gullah Geechee people. The questions we asked in 2000 is what is Gullah? What is Geechee? What are the threats do you see to this way of life? And it's here along Highway 17 where you can see one challenge facing the preservation project. Signs of development mix in with long-standing symbols of the Gullah identity. So in an effort to balance the need for road improvements with the importance of the customary basket stands, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina offered tax breaks to businesses who help build and maintain these wooden structures on their property. It's one way to help the sweetgrass basket industry. It smells fresh and the culture it stands for survive. Any development or any activity that occurs in this area uh, is safeguards in there to ensure that the basket stands can be protected, sweet grass can be planted. People in St. Helena's Gullah community hope the multi-million dollar project helps tell the story of their African ancestors and the valuable chapter they hold in American history. Today, we feel a greater sense of ownership and a greater sense of, of pride about it. It is a way of preserving, but then again, it's changing the culture because, you know, there are so many different people coming in. And while the federal government works to protect this culture, others say the most effective preservation efforts are the ones that take place within the community.